Hello everyone and welcome back to Super Flat Survival. My name is Small Cats and we're on a llama. Uh, let's not ask what happened to the original owner of this llama. It's not important, it doesn't matter, but uh, we have a llama now. And as we're back in the Super Flat world, we have lots of things I want to do today. So there's two farms I want to build that I think are going to be very useful for us. First is a pumpkin melon farm and second is a cactus farm. We've got cactus from the Wandering Trader, and we finally have pumpkin seeds and melon seeds from the Wandering Trader as well. So, we're going to get started. Alright, so we have a Wandering Trader here. He's got some cactus, nautilus shells, he had fire core blocks, some mango propicules. I'm just kind of buying all of this. I also want to buy the tulips from him. Again, we can't really get those items here in super flat. I'll, I'll buy these mango propicules just in case we need those. Thank you. Oh. So helpful. What a lovely wandering trader. All right, so let's make our cactus farm. Cactus farms are actually super easy. We need a nine by nine circle or square, sorry, a nine by nine square. We're just going to use solid blocks for this. I could save materials by kind of digging down into the ground, but I don't want to. And then I need to add a ledge to this. This is going to keep our water source uh, inside of the farm. We'll come back here and uh, add light blocks to this so that it is nice and bright for our cactus. Ah, we're out of blocks. Of course we are. All right, easy peasy. And then what we do is we place our sand in this grid pattern. And then we need to put chest here. We can expand this storage later and a hopper going into it. Nice. And then fences. So the fences, which we should end up having 12 pieces. Whenever a cactus grows up, the cactus doesn't allow a block to be next to it. So what will happen is the cactus will actually pop off of the top uh, and be picked up by our water collection system because it can't keep growing when there's that fence there. And then we need water, which I have one bucket of. And so we put water in all four corners. See how the water goes there? So now if I were to throw this grass block here, yep, it ends up in the hopper. Perfect. Let's get some more water. All right, and that is all of the water we need. And so now all that's left actually is to place the cactus. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So we only have the eight cactus right now, which is fine. Um, once we get some more cactus grown, we'll be able to expand our farm. And yep, right here. Dig down three. We should be able to dig into this. Yep, perfect. And there is our collection system. We can put a ladder down in here later. So yeah, that is how you build a quick cactus farm. So hopefully this works. We can check back in on it later to see if it works. All right, so it's been a few minutes and we have a cactus in here. So our cactus farm is working, which is fantastic. So as it continues to work, what we'll do is we'll get the cactus out of the collection chest and put it back here into the farm. So more cactus, we'll get more cactus. And then the nice thing about this is that this is tileable. Uh, and we actually have a very significant amount of space above this first layer of the farm. So what we can do is as we get more, we'll build a second layer and maybe a third layer and get even more cactus. 
All right, so with our cute little cactus farm done, I want to focus on the next thing, which is a pumpkin melon farm. So we have this. I've been organizing my shulk boxes for once. We've got melon seeds and we've got pumpkin seeds. Um, so what we want to do is basically create one of the types of farms that uses note blocks and pistons in order to grow pumpkins and melons. So an important thing to note is the way that pumpkins and melons grow. Let me get out my hoe. That's not the right box. I have to memorize the colors of everything. I'm having some issues with my mouse connectivity. So if you see me taking a really long time to click on things like I did just then, it's because my mouse is dying. Okay, so we have a bucket. We're gonna really quick explain this. So basically, in Minecraft, we have a water source here to hydrate. So I'll plant one of our melon seeds because it's important. So the melon crop doesn't grow quite like a normal crop. What happens is it's going to grow a stalk that's about a full block tall. And then conceivably, it could place a melon here, here, or here. It can't because there's water here. Now, if there was no water, it could place a melon here, 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 or here. So what we basically want to do is create a grid pattern. Oh, we lost that melon seed. A grid pattern um, using pistons and observers and note blocks so that we can grow as many melons as possible. This type of farm doesn't actually use water in its construction, it just uses uh, farmland and pumpkins and melon seeds. So I'm gonna get some wool. You know, what I think let's go for cyan. Use cyan to help us kind of do this. We're gonna get our redstone box. Rocket box, redstone box. The colors of all of the farms are kind of not lining up right now, but that's okay. We're gonna put this over here. Basically need a 10 by 10 area. Then we're gonna dig another layer down. Now I am following a tutorial for this farm because I'm not particularly good at redstone. This is a tutorial by not Maya chair. I will link their video in the description so you can follow along if you're also building this kind of farm. Uh, but thank you so much for the tutorial. Uh, again, I'm not particularly good at redstone. Uh, I occasionally do redstone myself and it usually takes me forever. And so for things like this, I prefer to follow a tutorial because it's just easier. Now we build out three like that. So we're going to place a double chest here, which we can replace this later. Hopper here, and then we want a further facing into this hopper right here. So this right here is going to read what's happening. It's reading the power levels inside of this hopper. So it's going to know when items are moving through the hopper and when they're not. Lock wool here, and a redstone torch goes here. So we're basically powering through all of this. All right, and then we put a dark oak button here. It can be any kind of button, it doesn't matter. And some redstone dust right here. So you can see that this is powered. So then we place a powered rail here over the hopper. You can see that it's powered. We're going to use regular rails to get down here into the farm. So now this is really simple. We're going to really quickly basically create like a looping um, minecart rack. We're gonna have to craft ourselves some powered rails, but that's not a big deal. But you get the idea. Okay, so we have our minecart mine cart track here, and it goes up here and it unloads. Now, if I throw a couple items down here for it to pick up on the way back, we should see all of that end up in here. So there's some grass in here already. You see it's going to go all the way down and bounce back. Yep, okay, and it unloads. Nice. All right, so we're going to fill this in with grass. It doesn't need to be uh, grass, you can do dirt. Since we can hoe this and turn it into farmland from grass blocks, we might as well do this. Now, what we need to do is actually find the center block 
Okay, here we go. Now it's right. So I just had one block off. We put a stair, we waterlog that stair. So this is going to keep our crops hydrated normally on a pumpkin and melon farm. You wouldn't bother to do this, but this design does it. It usually means that it grows a little bit faster. All right, everybody. So what we have here are pumpkins and melons basically planted in rows. Uh, so it's altering rows. It goes pumpkin, melon, pumpkin, melon, pumpkin, melon. So this row needs to be pumpkins. Uh, we'll craft this down into pumpkins. So what we'll get do is we're going to get pistons and observers. The observers are going to go over the crop stems, basically watching whenever the plant grows, the stem bends down. So the observer is going to notice that state change and the pistons will all push down like that. And they're going to break all of the pumpkins and the melons and our hopper minecart will pick it up. Okay. So see, this is what I mean by the stem bends. The observer is going to notice that and record that state change. But in the meantime, we're getting a ton of pumpkins and melons. I think we're only going to need this one farm. We aren't going to need a ton of this. All right, so this is our completed farm. I actually ended up deviating from the design. This design called for redstone here and then solid blocks here. Now, I think if we did that, what that would cause is for all of the pistons to go off at once. But actually, it's working really well just doing its own thing. Um... It's individually triggering pistons and basically the surrounding pistons and it's it's working fine. So I really don't think we need to have these blocks here. And if I don't have to use resources on a world where our resources are already a problem, then I'm not going to. So I'm going to leave the farm design as it is. with just the redstone on top of the observers. The I believe it's called quasi connectivity is powering the pistons in the vicinity of the observer that goes off. And it's working fine. There was one thing I caught that I made a mistake. I had the comparator turned around. So I had the small end facing that way. Uh, that's wrong. You want this end, the, the double end facing the hopper to read the um, inventory. So now what happens is the minecart comes out. This reads that there's items in the minecart and therefore in the hopper. Or it's reading that there's items coming out of the hopper. Uh, and then once this is empty, it turns off again and the minecart goes back down. So it actually empties all the way now, which is really nice. Um, yeah, so see, you can see it in action right there. It emptied and it left. So awesome, awesome, awesome. It works really well. Uh, and we're basically done with this uh, farm. One other thing I would kind of like to do today that I, I don't necessarily need to do, but I would like to do is... Our gold farm is a disaster. Um, there's nothing inherently wrong with it per se, so much as that it's currently not working the way that I would like it to. Um, there's a lot of junk items such as uh, rotten flesh and the swords that you get from the zombie piglins that are basically clogging up the inventory. So what we really need to add is like an item sorter. Um, sort of situation and then uh, add in something to basically destroy the items that we don't need. Um, that way we can get only gold and gold nuggets and nothing else and it's going to save us a lot of time having to like sift through the items we're getting. Um, so I want to figure out how to do that. I'm going to really quick hop into my creative testing world, figure something out, hopefully something easy that I can just flip a switch and it, it turns on. Uh, and then turns off when I'm ready to go. Uh, that will deal with our inventory issue. All right, guys, so we're here in the nether and I've gotten started on our item sorter. So right here is where the items are gonna fall down. So we're gonna have our system that will sort everything. As you can see, I have a bit of a mess going over here uh, right now while I'm sorting all of my items but that's fine it's just going to take a minute but once this is done we should be able to get rid of all of our kind of nonsense items and only have good items remaining okay so we're back we have all of the chests we have everything i fixed the issue here i had a uh, observer facing backwards now if we hit this lever it activates that dropper and that's going to dispense all of our garbage, basically. 
Um, and then we want to break this block so we don't have any hostile mobs spawning. And really quick, we want to craft ourselves uh, an anvil. We're going to name this garbage item. We're going to call it filter flesh, which is horrifying and disgusting, and I'm sorry, but I don't feel bad uh, in reality because we need it. So what this is going to do is this is going to trick our observers, sorry, they're not observers, they're comparators, uh, into, oh, that's wrong. Yep, there we go, 41. So that's basically tricking a power level into happening. So that'll take down to 41 and this will take down to 41. So basically what we have is the first guy is going to filter out gold ingots. That's the only thing that's going to come through this line. This is going to go nuggets and gold nuggets. So all of the rotten flesh, all of the swords are going to go into the garbage. We just have to remember that in order to run this system, we need to have this guy taking on. So um, we can check it actually by throwing some trash into the system. Okay, so like if I throw that in there. Yep, all right, so this is our new functioning gold farm. This is excellent, honestly. Uh, see, yep, items are falling into it right now. It's all within render distance of each other. So as I'm AFKing at my AFK point, I can leave my computer running overnight and AFK um, as long as I eat something. Um, one of the things I probably ought to do is add a armor stand here so that I can sweep an armor stand and basically not get any durability on my hunger while I'm doing this. That way I don't have to worry about dying while I'm AFK, but it's fine. But yeah, I can basically just leave this running now with my clicker on and get gold while I don't have to do any work. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Super Flat Survival. Um, this episode turned into a bit of a farming episode. Uh, I wasn't really planning on it. I had hoped to record some of my footage of me working on the terraforming project, but... Instead, we built a whole bunch of farms. So we finished our cactus farm, we built a pumpkin melon farm, and we made this lovely upgrade to our gold farm. Uh, this is gonna be awesome. This is gonna help us uh, cure and zombify more villagers and do a bunch of trading and just all the different types of things we need to get resources. In the next episode, I am hopefully gonna have some wonderful time-lapse footage of all of the work I'm doing on terraforming. But thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. I've been Small Cats. Have a great night.